Alrighty, in this video we're going to put together our deploy client target. So we've already pretty much stubbed out what the deploy t client target is going to do. It's going to build the standalone Unity build, zip it up and upload it, and we've actually mostly figured out what these two steps are going to look like based on our deploy launcher. But before we get into our deploy client and talk about how we can automate the building of standalone uh, projects in Unity, we are going to take a little look at the max file size for uploading to ASP.NET Web API. What do I mean by that? Well, there actually are going to be two limits that we have to deal with, one for IIS and one for ASP.NET. We're going to have to write code that, uh, or not write code, but write configuration in our web doc config to handle both these cases. So let's first go ahead and take a look at what happens if we try to upload a relatively large file to our web API. So over on my other screen here, I'm firing up Postman, and um, I already have a, I already have something set up here that'll work. So I already have a, um, it's going to be a post request. Let me make sure first that I that I build this project. So just hit F6. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're um, hitting the launcher's upload. We're using a deploy token. We're using the one that's bound to 127001. Uh, we're sending in a timestamp and a version via form data. We're also sending in upload. Now I'm going to hit choose file and then I'm going to navigate to how about our build launcher right here. So we see we have a 9 kilobyte uh, launcher.zip and I click on that and Let's set the timestamp to something low so it won't um, think that this is a recent um, deployment. I'm going to hit send, and what we're going to get is we're going to get success, like what we saw before in a year and a half, about. Well, that's doing that. Okay, so we get success. We get a 200 okay. That's cool. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to select a... How about an... 18 kilobyte file and then I'm going to zip it up or actually how about I t how about I just take these so okay so I'm going to say choose file I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to select buzzsaw assets.zip notice the file size is 17 megabytes I'm going to hit open and then I'm going to hit send and look what we get we get an error, and it says, error reading my multi-part multi -part body part. And the stack trace is pretty intimidating. If we look into the stack trace, we can actually find um, the part of our user code that resulted in this error. So coming back into Visual Studio, the part that resulted in this error is actually going to be in our upload service right about here, line 25, when we say request content read as multi-part as sync. And that's when it will throw this error. This error, um, error reading my multi-part body part actually has nothing to do with MIME types or the way that the multi-part body part was formatted at all whatsoever. The error is actually not telling us what it should tell us, which is that the file size was too large for ASP.NET to handle. So what we need to do is we need to configure our site to allow large file sizes but we only want to do so for specific paths. We only want to open up the ability to upload large files to our launcher's upload and our client upload. And um, that's to prevent the possibility of a person sending a massive file to any of our other endpoints and throwing the server into a loop for a little while and potentially causing a denial of service attack. But fortunately, because ASP.NET Web API only starts reading the contents of the multi-part um, request once it's gotten into my user code, and we've protected access to that user code through our um, deploy token authorization, we can be fairly certain that a person uploading to either of these endpoints has a proper deploy token, and because they have a proper deploy token, um, we implicitly trust them, because that's trust is what the deploy token is really all about. Okay, so basically we want to make this request work for both our uh, launcher's upload and our client upload. And as far as the maximum file size, I'm just going to I'm going to go with um 
uh, let's go with one gigabyte. So one gigabyte is 1024 megabytes, which is 1024 kilobytes, which is going to be 1024 bytes. And bytes is what we're going to want to um, uh, to handle. Yeah, one gigabyte should be fine. I have this number over here on another screen. Um, just go to Google, type in one times 1024 times 1024 times 1024, and you will get that number. Um, coming back into Visual Studio, let's go ahead and configure our our particular upload endpoints to allow files that are at least or at most a gigabyte. And we can up up that limit whenever we want arbitrarily. In fact, let's just go ahead and do five gigabytes. Why not? Okay, so that number is going to be about what is that? That is five billion three hundred and sixty eight million seven hundred and nine thousand one hundred and twenty bytes. Okay, so we're going to jump into our web doc config underneath buzzmo.web, and we're going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to say location path equals forward slash API. Actually, I can just copy what we have right here and just dump it right here. And I'm also going to make this a virtual path by putting in the tilde right there, and I hit control shift something. There we go. And then we're going to do the same with the other location. And the other location is going to be the exact same thing as this location, except it will be for our clients and not our launchers. OK, so what do these two things do? You, first of all, you'll notice that Resharper is graying them out. Resharper is graying them out because it can't find a file that is at API v1 launchers upload. And that's because of the way routing works. Routing does not match up a URL to a particular file. So you can ignore that warning. We can ignore the location element as unused. In fact, this happens so often to me. I'm just going to go ahead and click this. I'm going to say suppression, suppress inspection. And I'm going to say inspection options. And I'm going to turn it into a hint instead so that they're not grayed out for me. OK, so what do the location things do? Well, the location things are really cool because they allow you to override pretty much any options in your web.config on a per location basis. So like I said, we want to apply our upping of the file size request to both of these API endpoints, but nothing else, so that our unauthenticated or our, our requests that don't require authentication, if a person would be, would be to hit that with a huge file, um, it'll block that request, which is what we want to do for security reasons. All right, so again, like I said, we have to do two things. We first have to up the limit in ASP.NET, and that's going to be a default of four megabytes. To do that, we open up system.web. Then inside of system.web, we type in HTTP runtime, and then we say max request length, and then we put in a number in bytes that we want it to be which in this case, this is going to be my 5,368,709,120. And um, whatever. That's fine. You can ignore that warning, too. OK, so that's going to be telling ASP.NET what the max request length is. But since we're hosting on IIS, IIS has another option that we need to do um, or need to set in order to inform IIS of our new max request length. See, if we upload something that hits this limit, we'll get an error in ASP.NET. If we hit, if we upload something that hits IIS's limit, we will get, I believe it's going to be a 4 or 1 bad request, um, if I'm not mistaken. So to do that, inside of our location path, but above our system.web, we're going to want to do system.webserver. Now the web server element is what's used to configure IIS. We're going to type in security, and then under security, we want request filtering, and then in request filtering, we want request limits, passing in a max allowed content length of our 5 billion number. So this configures this for IIS and ASP.NET. To Let's go ahead and make sure this works first before I copy and paste this over to the other location. So coming back into um, Chrome, I'm going to hit send. Now I don't have to do a rebuild on our website in order to get the new version of the web.doc config. That's because web any change to a web.config is going to result in um, 
an application restart. And we see we still get the same error, because of course we do. Let's make this not pathed. Um, it really doesn't like that. It seems that, um, <laughs> uh, I forgot the whole, uh, yeah, it doesn't want a virtual path there. I wonder why that is, though. I, I guess maybe the path is by default set to virtual. Okay, anyway, coming back here and hitting send, we will get an error. And unfortunately, the max request length is an integer. Uh, because it's an int32, it will have a max value. So let's go ahead and figure out what the max value of int um, 32 is. So I'm going to type in int or int max value into Google. And I'm going to get an MSDN page. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this number, which this number is going to be 2,147,483,647. Okay, now that we've done that, coming back into here, hit send. And we'll get another error because the max allowed content length attribute is invalid, not a valid unsigned integer. So this guy needs to be a different number, and that number is going to be uint max value, which according to MSDN, the uint max value should be around 4 billion. Actually, yeah, it is. It's going to be 4,294,967,295. Okay, let's come back into here, hit send, and see what happens. And it uploads. So that's what we want. Um, in the future, we might, when our file size gets a little bit bigger than um, 2 gigabytes, we're going to have to look at an alternate strategy for uploading. Um, I mean, there's a variety of different protocols that we can use for this purpose, but for right now, we're just using straight up HTTP uploads. Okay, so uh, that's our launcher is done. Let's type in clients, hit send, and we get that error, which is good. The reason why getting this error is good is it means since we haven't set these parameters for our uh, client's upload yet, we don't have that uh, functionality in there yet. So I'm going to go ahead and nuke the, um, uh, the virtual path there, and then I'm just going to copy and paste our... Uh, system web server security request filtering request limits and our system web HTTP runtime max request length. All right, coming back into Postman, we can go ahead and hit send, and we should get a 200 OK. And we get a 200 OK. Alrighty, so that's pretty much all we have to do inside of our web doc config. So now we can come back here into the Buzz MMO build dot project file and talk about how we're going to build a standalone unity well that's actually pretty straightforward i'm going to open up a explorer window um to here and then i'm going to open up i'm going to open up a uh, command prompt that is right inside of our src folder so open up a command prompt that's right inside of the src folder which is where your buzz mmo build .proj file will live now what we need to do is we need to execute unity and we need to basically tell it exactly what uh, what project to build and exactly where we want it to stuff that standalone and so the command to do that is going to be something like uh, first we're going to have to access unity so I'm going to say C program files um, I believe unity is 32 bit uh, unity and then we're going to want to do editor unity.exe now if I were to just hit that we will get unity launched right but Unity supports a variety of different uh, command line arguments that we can pass into in order to do a standalone build um, automatically. So those parameters are going to be dash no graphics space dash quit. So no graphics means it's not going to show us a GUI. And dash quit will mean that the process will exit immediately once it's done doing whatever I'm going to tell it to do. Then um, we need to uh, tell it a couple other things. Uh, we need to say batch mode to enable um, it to be in batch mode as, a, as opposed to its normal mode. Then we can pass in our um, project path. 
Now project path is going to be the path to the project that we're going to want to build. So what is that? Well, that path is going to be our absolute path to our Unity. So let's go ahead and look at um, our project root that has our Git folder in it. And let's open up Unity and open up Client. This is going to be our project path. So I'm going to take this path, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to paste it in here. So that tells Unity which, which project to load, but it doesn't quite yet tell Unity what to do with that project once it loads it. So that's what the build Windows player flag comes in. Now the build Windows player flag is going to require a path to the .exe that we want to build. Now the path that I want to build in is actually going to be um, something like our root project build and then I want to create a new folder called work. And our work folder is going to contain a bunch of temporary files during the build process, which is perfect for where we want our standalone player to go. Since remember, once we build our standalone player, we're going to zip it and upload it. Our work folder is where that just that garbage data goes, that intermediate data goes. Once we're inside of work, I want to create another folder called client. Uh, no, you don't have to create these folders. They'll be created for you automatically. I just want to visually show you guys where I want the standalone file or standalone build to go exactly. And so that's going to be under build work client. So I'm going to take this path. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come back over here into Unity. And I'm going to paste it right here within these quotes after build Windows player. Now if I hit enter, we won't see any output. And that's a kind of an annoying thing about using Unity in batch mode. But what we will see is we will see that it was dumped here, but, oh yeah, um, let's just ignore that for a second, come back, hit up. Um, it's not the, uh, the, uh, the build Windows player does not point to a folder, the build Windows player points to an actual executable. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add buzzmmo.exe. Now we hit enter, and we wait for a little bit, and I'm in my work folder. See our client folder appeared? Unity automatically created it for us, and our build appeared. Our entire standalone build that we can go ahead and run but does absolutely nothing because it's currently empty. But that now appears because of this command. So we've now figured out how to automatically invoke Unity um, to, well, perform builds. OK, so there's a couple things that we need to um, take into consideration with this command. This command is all well and good. Uh, we point to Unity, no graphics, quit batch mode, then we pass in our project path, then we pass in our build Windows player. Looks all good, but it's not going to quite work on multiple machines. It's not going to work, for example, on our CI server because we make assumptions about where Unity is installed and where our project exists. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to turn these into some variables. And we can do that inside of our buzzmmo.build.proj folder. But there's a couple variables that I want to talk about that won't be immediately obvious. So I'm going to go ahead and hit mark. I'm going to copy this entire line, and I'm just going to paste it right in here. Then I'm going to remove the command prompt part, and then I'm going to turn this into a single line. So now we have a single line for our um, um, our command. Of course, this is not valid XML. This is not valid um, MS build syntax. What we have to do is we have to wrap this inside of an exec. So exec, and then for exec, we just simply type in command equals and then bleh. What is the command going to equal? Well, the command is going to equal what we established to be our um, our build or our build uh, command to force Unity to do a batch no graphics auto quit build. Okay, so for exec command equals, note that I'm using double quotes right there. I don't want to use double quotes for the exec command equals. I want to use single quotes, and that's because the command that I constructed contains these single quotes, and or these double quotes. So I want to wrap this entire command in single quotes. 
So now when I execute deploy client, it will perform a Unity build, but we're not quite done yet. Let's go ahead and fix up the paths that should be fairly easy to figure out. And that's going to be our project path and our build windows player path. Because basically all we want to do is take off this, qualif this path that points to a particular location on my hard drive. We want to go all the way up there. And then what we want to do is we want to type in um, dollar sign ms build this file directory and then dot dot slash unity client. So this will have be the absolute path to our um, unity project and that's exactly what we want to pass into project path. Then we need to do, give the same treatment to our build windows player. So I'll nuke all the stuff that's specific to my machine up to that build folder and then I'll type in dollar sign ms build this file directory dot dot slash build work client buzzmo.exe. So now I've parameterized both the build windows player flag as well as the project path flag. So both of those will now work. But there's something important that I'm leaving out, and that is my specific location that I've installed Unity to. So I kind of want to have this path be passed in as a parameter so that you could A, install Unity to a different location on the server that builds your system, or and B, install maybe even multiple versions of Unity on the same computer, because you want the particular build that you're running to point to a specific instance of Unity. So we know that we want to turn it into a variable, but I don't want to have to specify that variable when I do builds for my um, uh, on my local machine. Basically what I'm saying is, although I'm on the CI server, when we set up this build process, it's perfectly reasonable to add a variable um, that we can pass in and override on a per project basis because we only have to do that once. But since on my development machine, I might be executing these builds quite frequently uh, for testing purposes, I don't want to have to manually specify the path to Unity every time that I do that. So we have a couple options. We could create a default value for C program files x86 Unity um, up at the top of the file, or we could create a system-wide environment variable for the home of our Unity installation. I'm going to go with the default parameter, because on most development machines, that's exactly where Unity is going to go, assuming that you have a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. So I'm going to turn this into a variable that will have a default that can be overridden by your build server. Like I said, an alternate solution is to create a global environment variable on your local machine, and MS Build will pick up on that environment variable just as it would any other variable that you would specify via a flag or via a property group inside of the MS Build file. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn this into a variable, um, and the variable name is going to be Unity Path. Well, first I want to get this on my clipboard for the default, and then I want to go ahead and say variable unity path. Now I'm going to scroll up to the top of my file where I have my property group up here for my default values, and I'm going to say unity path condition equals unity path equals blank C program files x86 unity. So now this is a property that can be overridden by our build script or our continuous integration tool. All right, let's go ahead and test this. Um, I'm going to come up here into my work folder, or my client folder, and I'm just going to delete client, that entire folder, because that should be recreated when we run the build. So let's come back over here, and instead of doing that, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and fire up a development command prompt which again you can access through your start screen or your start menu. Um, jump into here, type in MS, well oh, that's not how you spell MS build. MS build buzz MMO build dot proj forward slash T colon deploy client. Hit enter. We get our build. And then we get that unity command. And now if we come back into um, buzz mmo build work client, 
we see we have our client built out. Okay, so there's really only two steps left. We have to zip up our Unity build and we have to upload our zip. So let's go ahead and do our zip up Unity build. Just like we did before, I'm gonna have to invoke the create item task. The create item task, in this case, I'm gonna say include, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm not going to specify the files one by one because that would be an absolute pain. So instead of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say ms build this file directory dot dot slash um, then I'm going to pass in basically build work client and then I'm going to say asterisk asterisk forward slash asterisk dot asterisk what this um, pattern means is it means grab all files and all files of all directory or all subdirectories and all files of all sub subdirectories and place them into this item now that I've done that, I have to give this item a name. So I'm going to say output task parameter equals include property name. Or sorry, um, task parameter equals include. Then I'm going to want to pass an item name equals client zip files. Now that I've created that item, I can invoke the zip task. I can simply write zip and then pass in zip file name equals, and then I'm gonna pass in dot dot slash uh, build client client dot zip. Files is going to be ampersand um, client zip files. And then I th think that's about it, except I'm gonna have to pass in my working directory. So working directory is going to equal, then I'm gonna use an absolute path to this. I'm gonna say ms build this file directory dot dot slash build work client okay so this is executing our zip task uh, it should zip up all the um, artifacts that unity created into a file for us so coming back into um, our command prompt let's execute our build again and see if we get that zip file generated so unity is currently doing its build and it looks like we do get a zip file generated. Come into client, open up client.zip. And okay, so that's really, we messed up. It looks like I messed up the, um, um, the parameters again. And instead of passing in a relative path to zip file name, I'm going to pass in an absolute path, typing in ms build this file directory dot dot slash build client client zip come and run this again I really need to memorize the way that um this zip task wants to work because it's doing it again weird all right it looks like we have a couple typos so right here or at least one typo um, right here it says ms this file directory. It should be ms build this file directory. And do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that the um, the the zip task isn't picking up on our paths because I'm using forward slashes. I'm thinking that when they wrote their code, they didn't account for forward slashes being a valid um, path delineator in Windows. So let's go ahead and replace all our forward slashes with black backslashes here. So backslash, 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 come here. I'm just so used to using forward slashes for path delineators, it didn't even occur to me that there's a possibility that it really just doesn't like them. Let's come back here to our um, development shell after we've uh, replaced all of our forward slashes with backslashes. And it looks like actually everything worked. We can open up our client.zip and we directly get buzzmmo.data and buzzmmo.exe as opposed to having some weird pathing. So it looks like, just pro tip to everybody watching the video, when you work with these uh, zip paths and MS build paths, uh, be sure to use backslashes instead of forward slashes. Which you may have already been doing because that's the common thing to do in Windows. But again, I just have a habit of using forward slashes. Um, I, I just think that looks cleaner and I'm, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload it now. To upload it, 
we're just going to type upload file. We're going to say type equals client env equals env for environment domain equals domain deploy token equals deploy token file equals dot dot let's just do backslashes from here on out dot dot slash build slash client slash client dot zip timestamp equals timestamp version number equals version number alrighty let's go ahead and test this I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up MySQL Workbench so that we can look at what's been uploaded so far. Actually, I'm gonna clear out all of my existing uploads entirely. Um, just delete all of them. So basically, just truncating the table down to zero for our uploads table. Hit apply so that we can watch this table grow as we send in stuff. Next up, I'm going to uh, go ahead and fire up. Um, mmo2.3dbuzz.dev I'm going to go ahead and get a deploy token on my clipboard. While it's doing that I'm going to pa pass in forward slash property deploy token equals and then I'm going to have to specify a valid deploy token after I log in here. Wait a year and a half. Alright, let's jump into our admin deploy tokens, grab our 127001 token, and just paste it right there. Let's hit enter, and we get a full project build, we get a Unity build, we get a zip file, and we get an upload. And then let's check our uploads. We indeed have an upload. Let's go ahead and deploy our launcher. So basically, deploying the launcher is the same thing, except for instead of saying deploy client, we say deploy launcher. Hit enter, we get a build, we get a zip, and we get an upload. Let's check up our uploads table, and we see we have a launcher and we have a client, both version 1, both with the appropriate timestamps. Alrighty. So really, what we've done so far is we've automated the process of building out our entire project and doing a, a, a couple custom things. I mean, we're using our own custom um, version numbering scheme, uh, so we need to upload our update our build information, and we're using our um, custom upload file, which results in a file being uploaded to our specific API, and then we bring it all together in this MS build file. So really, all that's left in our MS build file is setting up our deploy photon servers and our deploy websites. And these are going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to be using MS deploy for both of these things to basically synchronize folders. And that's really all we need to do. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and fix up our source control. So what do I mean by that? Well, I really don't want this build folder being added into source control. This build folder contains uh, build artifacts. In addition, I really don't want my individual build info files to be um, committed either. And that's because when we go ahead and have this be on a continuous integration server, those build info files are going to be overridden. When they get overridden, then they are considered changed, and then you'll get a merge conflict when you do the um, uh, the, the, the resynchronization of the repository. So to fix this, I'm going to go into the git ignore and I'm going to add a couple patterns. First of all, I'm going to say build. So forward slash build. So that'll get rid of that. Then I'm going to say forward slash source buzz mmo dot client forward slash build info dot cs and then source buzz mmo dot launcher forward slash build info dot cs. All right, so that um, fixes up my git ignore. Let's jump into source tree and make sure that we remove the files that have been ignored. So I'm going to come back into source tree, and you'll see that build info has already been added into my repository. 
Um, that's fine for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a... Um, uh, actually, how would we go about fixing this? Well, first of all, I'm going to do a stage all and a commit. It's the first thing I'm going to do. And then we're going to remove these files from our tree. So do that. Um, I've never done this with source tree before, so let's go on an adventure. Uh, let's see. I'm going to want to open up maybe my working copy, my branch. No. I don't want to open up my origin log history uh, search. Where do I get my list of files? Now that would seem like a pretty straightforward thing that you should be able to do. Uh, that's the wrong repository. Um, maybe view? I know there's a way to get into... Hmm. Maybe if I just come here and I just delete the files entirely, so I'm just going to delete build entirely, that folder, then I'm going to go into source client, I'm going to delete build info, then I'm going to go into launcher and I'm going to delete build info. Come back into source tree and see what we get. Okay, so we get these deletions. Even though they're ignored, since they've been explicitly added to our repository, we have to make sure we delete them from the repository. So I'm going to stage these deletions and I'm going to hit commit. Type in a commit message. That's a terrible commit message, I know. Um, come back here. Um, let's go ahead and deploy our launcher. And then let's go ahead and deploy our client. And if we've done everything correctly, what we should see happen is our build info files should be recreated and our zip files should be created, but they sh should not reappear in source tree because of our ignore pattern. And as you see, they are not located in source tree because of the ignore pattern. So now what we have here is we have our build folder containing our client zip and our launcher zip and it's properly ignored. So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up all we need to do with our um, deploying of our client and deploying of our launcher. So we'll see you guys next video.